What you're watching here is basic.fla file, which is an ActionScript 3.0 file written in Flash CS3. Flash CS3 supports AS 3.0, which is fine for our purpose to understand ActionScript 3.0 basics. And if you want to use any later version of Flash, then it is fine too. In this file, there are four layers. The BG layer, which has a rectangular box, so pretty simple. Above that, we have a controls layer, where lies a movie clip, and that movie clip in the library has the name play. The instance name of this movie clip is play underscore mc. Now let's take a look what's in this movie clip. Just double click on this movie clip in the library to open that. This movie clip has two frames. The first frame has the content, but the second frame is left blank. There is one layer for actions and take a look of its first frame by just clicking on it and we press F9 and here we have a simple stop function on line 1. Let's go back to the scene 1. Now we have a ball layer. Realize a movie clip and its instance name is ball underscore mc. And in library we have this movie clip and its name is ball. That contains only a spherical shaped object having only one frame on a single layer. And finally we have actions layer and it is now selected and I'm pressing F9 to open the editor. Now first of all I'm gonna write a single line of code. I'm writing play underscore mc. That means there's an instance in our main timeline of this name play underscore mc. And I'm going to attach an event listener to that. And the event is a mouse event. And it is basically a click event. And I'm attaching a function to that, which is start underscore game, which we haven't defined yet. But what this code will do is whenever we click on this object, which is play underscore mc, then the function start game will run. So let's see the code again. Here we have that movie clip, play underscore mc, and an event listener is attached to it, which is a mouse event and function is start underscore game. So let's define the start game function. This function runs when an event happens and the event is mouse event, that is click also. So we pass the event into this function this way. Since this function is not returning any value, so we write void. Take a look at the movie. We want this movie clip to be clicked and whenever it is clicked, then the play movie disappears. So we state that play underscore mc, which is a movie clip, should go to the second frame and stop there. Remember the second frame of this movie clip is an empty frame. So now test the movie by pressing Ctrl and Enter. And I'm gonna click play movie. And it disappears. We can do other things too in this function. For instance, we have a ball in this movie and the instance name is ball underscore mc. Whenever we click on the play movie, then the ball should move. So for that, let's write it this way. We have a ball underscore mc movie clip. And we are attaching an event listener to it. And the event is an event. And the type is enter frame all caps. And we want a function to run which is move underscore ball. Enter frame will happen every time when 
Paul underscore MC enters into a frame and it is continuous by nature. So let's write move underscore ball function. The event it is going to receive is an event and it returns nothing so it's void. We can move any object on x-axis or at y-axis by defining these values on x-axis or at y-axis. So we write ball underscore mc dot x plus equals 10. What this will do, it will add 10 to its position on x-axis. So if in the first frame the position of ball is 10, then in second frame it will be 20 and in the third frame it will be 30 and so on. So we can move our ball in this way. So now let's test the movie again. We click play movie and the ball goes to the right. So the ball is continuously goes to the right and it disappears. We will fix that in the next movie. We will get it bounced back when it touches the boundary of the movie. So see you in the next movie.